Good morning and welcome to worship here at Stone Presbyterian Church. Uh, we continue to celebrate worship here in person, but also our recording for the service for those who prefer to watch online. I'm Scott Leonard, the pastor here at Stone Church. I'm joined again by our music director, Rob Culp, our liturgist today, Sherry Robinson, and my wife and videographer, Helen Leonard. And thank you for those spread out in the pews and wearing masks and for those who are participating from home. Again, we here in the sanctuary will not be singing the hymns, but we will reflect upon the words while the music is played. We've gathered here to praise God, so now let us turn to God, opening ourselves in His presence.
you are invited now to come forward and make your special gift in the season of giving for the Presbyterian Mission Agency to support worldwide peacemaking and global witness efforts.
this we confess. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Comfort, oh, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, and that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead the mother sheep. In the name of Christ, the Good Shepherd of the sheep, I declare to you this good news, the forgiveness of sin in the love of Jesus Christ, who is Emmanuel, God with us. Thanks be to God. says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken voice says, cry out, and I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the 
flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, a herald of good tidings. Lift it up. Do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, Here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. The word of our Lord. The first generation of believers wondered how long they had to wait for the Lord's promised return. The words of an Encouragement in the second leader of Peter are not just for them, but for us two millennia later, as we too wait for him. Listen for the word from today's epistle lesson from 2 Peter, in chapter 8, verses 8 through 15. Do not ignore the one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like one day. The Lord is not slow, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will dissolve, be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will disclose. Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of people ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God? But in accordance with his promise, we wait for a new heaven and a new earth, where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace, without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.
Sarah Evans, Mark Schiff. Are any of these names familiar to any of you? Anyone? No? Well, Albert Michelson was a late 19th century scientist who showed that the speed of light in a vacuum is a constant, heralding one of the most fundamental changes in science. From that, another scientist was inspired to develop the theory of relativity, Albert Einstein. In 1952, private Sarah Evans was on her way home from her first military assignment when she was refused, when she refused to move to the back of the bus. Bomb refusing, she was taken to jail and detained for 13 hours. She sued the Interstate Commerce Commission for discrimination. Despite a judicial victory in November of 1955, the ruling was not enforced until 1961. You may recall the Montgomery, Alabama voice boycott, bus boycott in 1955 that was instigated when another American, African-American woman refused to move to the back of the bus, Rosa Parks. And finally, it's been said, quote, 
Mark Schiff is one of the funniest, the brightest, the best stage comics I have ever seen. Unquote. Who said that? The guy that Mark Schiff typically opens for on tour. Jerry Seinfeld. These are just a few examples of wake-up calls or opening acts. Not the main event, but a herald or forerunner to it. As we do for the second Sunday in Advent, today's scripture passages are also wake-up calls or opening acts. In this case, the heralding or announcing of the coming of our Lord. Today's Old Testament passage opens the second part of the book of Isaiah, and is often called Second Isaiah because it is almost a new book. The first 39 chapters are oracles of condemnation of Israel and Judah for falling away from Yahweh the Syria destroying Israel in the north, and later Babylon conquering Judah in the south, and exiling many of the people, particularly from Jerusalem, to Babylon. Now, 50 years later, Persia has conquered Babylon and has allowed the Jews to return to their homeland. So after the harsh tone up to now, the very first verse of chapter 40 begins unexpectedly with comfort. Oh, comfort my people, says your God. Comfort. Oh, comfort my people. Not as a command, but joyfully, tenderly. Israel has received from the Lord double because of her sins, and now the Lord is bringing them back. Today's passage is a prophetic response to outcries of pain from the people. For over a generation, God has been passive and silent. Their experience of exile is that God does not care whether they live or die. They are no more than blades of grass crushed by the warrior rushing to glory. And into this void of despair, the prophet acknowledges their despondency, but promises then that God has not abandoned them, and in fact tells them to get ready. <clears throat> Verse 3, a voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. God is coming but not in the settled, comfortable places of the cities and towns, but on the edges, the margins of where people are. Things happen in the wilderness. Wilderness is a place of struggle and spirit, both problematic and promising. The Israelites, wandered and struggled in the wilderness for 40 years. Elijah flees into the wilderness only to experience the still, small voice of God. God is coming, but the people are not to wait passively. They are to prepare the way of the Lord. They are to acknowledge and affirm as in verse 8, the grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of the Lord will stand forever. 
They are to go to the mountaintops and proclaim, Here is your God. And God will come with strength, but not as a warrior. As verse 11 closes out today's passage, he will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms, carry them in his bosom, and gently lead the mother sheep. The Lord's coming is tender comfort, not withering judgment. And yet, why should the people receive any comfort? They were punished for disobeying God. They have served their time and have been released from prison. But the likelihood of recidivism, of backsliding, is high. The people of Jerusalem are not deserving of comfort according to the norms of retributive judgment, of justice. But God has compassion on them because they are still His people. And it is the release from debt, not the efforts to satisfy the debt, that brings comfort penalty of Jerusalem's sin has now been paid. If this sounds more New Testament than Old Testament to you, you're not alone. Both John Calvin and Martin Luther read this chapter as clear gospel, with Calvin boldly asserting that, quote, this passage comprehends the whole gospel in a few words. In fact, Mark picks up on that very theme as he starts his book with the beginning of the good news. Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. In writing, of course, after the fact, Mark sees Jesus, the Son of God, as the Lord that Isaiah said was coming. But whereas Isaiah was a little nebulous on exactly who was announcing this, Micah sees this answered by the prophet Malachi in chapter 3 about God sending a messenger. And so with some artistic license, Mark combines the two, saying then, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Whereas Isaiah implied that people should go to the wilderness to prepare the way of the Lord, Mark is saying God is sending a messenger into the wilderness. And from there he will cry out to the people, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. For Mark and the other gospel writers, it is clear that John the Baptist was that messenger. He was the herald, the opening act, the wake-up call for the coming of Jesus the Christ, the Messiah. And he was fine with that role. By his own admission, he was not even worthy to stoop down and untie the sandals of Jesus. John's purpose was to get the people ready and by proclaiming a baptism of repentance 
for the forgiveness of sins. But though he was the voice of one crying in the wilderness, he was still calling to the people to prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight, echoing Isaiah. And like Isaiah, to prepare the way with worship and good works, not to earn, but to receive God's grace. And with joy of anticipation of the parousia, the coming of the Lord. The opening of Mark's Gospel reminds us that the decentering of God's good news, it is found on the edge beyond the boundaries of where we thought God is supposed to be. And so we find ourselves with John, not in the hustle and bustle of Jerusalem, but in the wilderness, in the margins, on the sidelines where the needs are, where God's love is needed. That is the message. We should cry out as ones preparing the way for the main event, the coming of our Lord. For the good news of God not only brings hope to those who find themselves in the peripheries of our world, but it also belongs there. God's good news of grace announces God's presence on the fringe. God's love that goes beyond the boundaries of where we thought God was supposed to be. And God's promise that there is no place on earth God will not go or be for us. In the name of God the Creator, God the Redeemer, and God the Sustainer. Amen. found in your bulletin based on the prologue of the Gospel of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made. What was made in Him was life, and the life was the light of humankind. Light shines in the darkness, 
and the darkness has not been able to overcome it. He was in the world, and the world was made through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to those who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God. You may be seated. Again, welcome to all of you visiting with us and worshiping with us today and those with us online. We do remind uh, those, our regular attendees, that when people are visiting, to ask them to fill out a visitor card that you might get to know them better and, and get to know them better yourselves afterwards. We also have prayer request cards in the pews so that you may we like to pray for specific needs, whether corporately or for myself or for our prayer chain, so you can fill those out and put them in the offering plates in the back. In our hospitality time, we once again will not have it, but I keep it up there to remind us someday we'll have sweet things to eat. Today is the first Sunday of the month, which is our loose change goes towards our deacons for all the work that they continue to do uh, and do so well throughout this pandemic. So any of the coins are okay, tens or twenties are fine as well, so they will appreciate it. Uh, also, there are uh, uh, pledge cards that are in the back, so if you can go back and check to see if yours are there, and if not, well, we can make sure you get some. So I happen to pick up Sherry Robinson, so she can get it later. Uh, we also uh, have our Christmas gifts and tags, and if you go back to our North Room in the Fellowship Hall, you can see that it's starting to fill up, and I, I don't know, Don, is there more that you wanted to say to that? Yeah, I, I just want to let you know that um, the tags are all gone. Uh, I was amazed because after last Sunday there were a number of them on the tree, but Janice uh, took a bunch of her clothes and she got great, great uh, bargains on Cyber Monday. Uh, and then during the week people came in and the tags had disappeared, so I, I will not be posting any on Facebook for anybody to get. But all the gifts have to be here for next Sunday. Uh, unwrapped with the tag on them, and we will be wrapping them next Sunday. It's all set up in the north room, and we're all spaced out to wear our masks. So thank you again for your great generosity, as you have in the past 35 plus years. Thanks again. A good way to prepare the way. Uh, also, you, uh, if you notice in our newsletter, we have, of course, another one of Mitch's great columns, uh, and this one on, you know, the latest in our repairs we've done on the church, and a little bit of history for that. Uh, and uh, I believe John Menard has some pictures that are back over in our display case, so I do encourage you, you know, in, a, in, in the proper fashion, don't all crowd together with your mask off, but if you can, you might want to take a chance to take a look at that as we continue the history of maintaining our uh, church over the past century or so. Uh, the other is that you may have also uh, noticed on our Facebook site or, or my Facebook site is uh, this, my pastor's column. I did a video of it this time. Our social media person, Sharon Hammer, who's helping us with our Instagram uh, page, suggested doing a video this time. And so I did it and she did a little bit of uh, editing to it to make it you know nicer because I'm no Dennis Dewey, and uh, we have it posted up, and I think it came out pretty well. I've gotten some good remarks from some people, former fr friends of mine, co-workers that haven't heard from in a while. So another one of those kind of things that we'll continue to try to to try to do. So to, you know, listen and see what you think, and you know, as always, I, I welcome only positive, praising feedback. Um, no, actually, you guys are very good about about all kinds of feedback. Um, uh, that being said, uh, on some, uh, any other announcements before some joys and concerns? Yes, Judy.
All right, so monetary donations for the country, for the country food pantry so they can buy milk. Of course, in this time, it's difficult for them to have as much of the physical donations and they need to buy a number of things. So uh, please, and if you're online, you can write a check or use our Giveify app in order and just designate it for a country pantry. Oh, I didn't forget, there are a couple of other items. Uh, one is the Building Stone Fair Trade Shop is still open for business and still eager to have your business, so I encourage you uh, during this time to go down to support the Fair Trade Shop. Of course, not for ourselves, it's all volunteer driven, but for those whom we support, who are also obviously being affected by the pandemic in even worse ways in the emerging countries. So uh, supporting for them, uh, supporting for the shop is a support for those as well. It might help if I show the pictures. Also next Sunday is Joy Sunday. Uh, and so we encourage you to wear pink. Uh, and the, the scripture lesson will be rejoice in the Lord always. I say rejoice as it typically is. So just a way to dress up a little bit, give you something different to wear before coming to worship. And just as, a, as I announced last week, but just as a reminder, we plan to Clinton Area Ministerium will once again sponsor the uh, Longest Night Ecumenical Service. We're going to host it here at Stone Church this year uh, because we're more able to accommodate people spread out as you, as you are. But we'll also be doing it uh, through a Zoom service as well in parallel. And frankly, if things get bad, then we may go to only Zoom. So one way or another, we're going to be able to have, have the service and we're planning for it. So I'm working with St. James on the particulars, but 6 p.m. on uh, Monday the 21st, the uh, winter solstice, the longest night of the year. Now, are there any other announcements? Yeah, Mary. Right, so Mary wants to remind me, us that there are the cards, the Christmas cards for our homebound to uh, sign in the back. So. If you, can, if you haven't done that last week, then do so uh, this week. Another, uh, another thing, I have a card from Seal, uh, who says, thank you so much for a lovely Christmas card. There, it's our deacons. I miss you all so much. As soon as this pandemic is over, I will be back. Thanks again with love, Seal. And of course, that's true with many of our people who are with us. They cannot be with us in person, but people like Seal, Mary and Steve Fodder, you know, do, are still part of our church lives and, and love that we are able to keep them connected. Uh, we've also, uh, my wife has talked to Deb LaFont and uh, she's doing okay. Um, and she very much appreciates the contact we've been able to keep with her, uh, whether it's through phone calls or the letters or cards. And again, very much uh, when you're homebound like that, to, to have that. I also did uh, hear from, about Trudy Chrysler is uh, they're moving her back home with her uh, uh, son and daughter and daughter-in-law uh, and uh, just because they think it'll be easier for her you know right now particularly at this time and so that's i think happening this week so uh, i mean trudy's doing okay uh, but you know obviously want to keep uh, continue to keep her in our prayers and and the chrysler family of course trudy's 96 i think so um She's just a wonderful spirit that we've had in our church. Uh, on uh, the uh, cons other concern side is uh, Laura Lynn gave me a couple of families for us to keep in our prayers. One is a family of David Burnett. Um, he had uh, multiple sclerosis and recently uh, died of COVID-19. And his mother, you know, Joanne, uh, of course, has to, to deal with that while herself having having Parkinson's. So we can obviously appreciate the, the, the stress and the sadness, you know, for them at this time. And another family, uh, Ken um, Marciano, uh, his father died of COVID-19 this week as well. And so to be with that family. So again, as we are, this pandemic is certainly not going away immediately. And so I do, we ask it to be with all those who are suffering at this time and do employ everyone to do what it can to be safe so that we can
can all be together again here next year. Are there any other uh, joys or concerns? Donna. So Jason, just a little bit of an extra tip makes a huge difference in someone's lives. And again, uh, anything that helps us lift our spirits these days and brings a smile to our face uh, is a great thing to do. If nothing... And then I remind you, a voice cries out, in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. And that we may prepare the way, you are invited to give your tithes and your offerings by depositing them in the offering plate at the back for those of you present here in the sanctuary or for those watching online by mail or using our online Givelify app of which you can specify if you'd like to go to a particular need. Friends, this is the feast of the Lord's coming. The loving Lord is host at that holy meal and invites all who wants to be his friends and follow in his way to come to enjoy the feast he has prepared. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give God thanks. It is right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, God of comfort and grace. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. You set us in the world to love and serve you and to live in peace with all you have made. When we turned from you, you did not turn from us, but remained constant and steadfast, speaking words of correction and comfort through your prophets. And so we praise you, joining our voices with the host of heaven and with all the faithful of every time and place who praise the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy, O God, and blessed is your Son, our Lord. You sent him into this world to satisfy the longings of your people for a savior, to bring freedom to the captives of sin, and to establish justice for the oppressed. He came among us as one of us, caring for the poor, welcoming the outcast, and sharing human suffering. We rejoice that in his death and rising again, you set before us the sure promise of new life and the certain hope of a home beyond death, where we will sit at table with Christ our host. Remembering your grace and all that you have done, we take this bread and this wine, elements of your good creation, and joyfully celebrate his dying and rising as we await the day of his coming, as we offer our very selves to you as a living and holy sacrifice. Let all your people now tell your story repeating these words. We remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. Holy God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, and upon these your gifts of bread and wine, that this may be for us a communion with each other in the body and blood of Christ. Make us one with him, and one with all who share this feast as nourishment for service through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, now and forever and to ages of ages. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer that our Lord has taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, took bread, and after giving thanks to God, broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink of it, do this in remembrance of me. And every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do proclaim the saving grace of our risen Lord until he comes. With thanksgiving, let us offer God our grateful praise. The gifts of God for the people of God. And as we have been doing during this time, when I indicate, I'll have you to come forward by the center aisles wearing your mask. We will give you the, the bread and have you go by on either side and pick up the cup, return to your pews by the outer aisles, and then we will partake together of the communion. <coughs> Table is set. Come. Taking the bread, we remember that we are all one body, one community of faith. Take and eat. And in 
drinking the cup, we remember that Christ poured out his blood for each of us and is our personal Savior as well. Take and drink. Let us pray. What has passed our lips is holy food, O Lord. May we possess in purity of heart that what is given to us in time may be our healing for eternity. May the memorial of your body given freely and blood poured out for us and for many strengthen us for the waiting and watching of this Advent season, that your will may be ours and our wills ever more perfectly may follow yours, and that we might always know ourselves to be loved by the unimaginable love that you hold for us as we seek to show that love in word and deed in this world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> Now and